Hi boys and girls. Um, oh, you alright? Yeah, I hope you are. Don't know what you've been doing this week. I've just been hanging around the house for the last couple of days. You know what, getting a little bit lightheaded at the moment though. But uh, welcome to Discoverers at Home, uh, episode three. Uh, it's really great that you can be here with us. Oh, just, oh, hold on a second, let me, just, uh, let me just sort myself out. see you all properly now. Oh yeah, well, that's really good. Oh, excellent. Okay, well, as I said, welcome back to Discoverers at Home, episode three. Um, we've got loads of things coming up for you. We've got, you know what's coming up, challenge for Kezi and Sarah, see what's going to happen this week. We've got Steve going to tell us uh, a little something a bit later on. Uh, we've got video, we've got our songs, we've got all the normal stuff um, for Discoverers and uh, I'm really great you can join us. Uh, again this week, uh, but let's as we also let's start off with a, a, a song, shall we? Um, actions, really big, voices, really loud. Uh, let's do this uh, wherever we're watching, and uh, let's sing this song together. <laughs> fantastic it's really great it's really great to know uh, there's actually people out there watching um, as well um, I'm just looking into a camera I've not a clue uh, who's out there uh, who's watching but I'm getting stuff sent to me uh, so I know you're still out there boys and girls it's really great um, to know that you're still enjoying discover us so I asked you didn't I to uh, send in a prayer a short prayer and uh, you've done that amazingly you've done it in various different ways and uh, we're just going to have a look through some of them um, over the next couple of minutes. And you might see uh, the prayer that you've said, uh, you might see yourself, and uh, just look out, read these prayers, listen to these prayers, and uh, they're just wonderful to know that we still have an amazing God that we can talk to, uh, amazing God who still hears everything that we say to him, wherever we are, uh, whatever time. Uh, so let's... Uh, listen and read uh, some of these prayers that you sent in. Get up, 
blankie, I can ride my bike by my girl Carmen. Thank you that we can have a nice time at Discoveries and thank you that we are safe and thank you that we've had a nice time with you, Wild Man. that we can have, have fun in the house and still when the coronavirus is going and thank you that we could, could have a nice birthday. Amen. I can play games with my family and open in present comment. Well, so lovely uh, to see and hear uh, those prayers. And uh, it's really great. As I said a few minutes ago, God hears all your prayers, boys and girls. Uh, he hears them all and uh, he knows what's in your heart and uh, he's listening uh, to everything. So yeah, uh, thank you uh, so much for those. So in a, a couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do for me next week. And uh, that'd be really good. Uh, but uh, we're going to sing a song uh, again. And uh, then after that, I uh, say so we've got Kezi and Sarah coming up. Uh, we've got another video. And uh, don't forget actually to look out for some bonus material uh, that might come uh, after the credits. Uh, just watch out for that, don't miss it. Uh, but let's sing a song uh, again, shall we, together?
what do I want you to do for me next week? Uh, well, what I want you to do, and again, there's various ways you can do this. Um, uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to either draw me a picture and send it over to me of your favourite Bible character. Uh, okay, a picture that you've drawn, uh, write the name above it, or if you're really um, interested in doing it this way, um, what you can do, you can dress up um, as your favourite character and uh, you can send me the photo and uh, we can see if we can guess uh, who this character could be. Um, so you've either draw a picture, your favourite character, send it in to me um, or dress up um, as your favourite character and get a photo and uh, we'll be able to put those on uh, the screen uh, next week again and uh, we'll be able to try and work out uh, who the, it's up to you, whichever way uh, you want to uh, want to do that. So, uh, uh, so uh, what we can you hear that noise? It's like whistling again, isn't it? Coming from somewhere. What happens when you hear whistling? Whenever you hear whistling, Mr. Dennis is always around. Where could he be? Hmm, let me think. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what I have for you this evening is a... Well, I want to start with a bit of a game. And the game goes like this. It's called Four Pictures, One Word, OK? Four Pictures, One Word. And what's going to happen is I'm going to show you four pictures on the screen and you need to work out what one word links those four pictures together. So, for example, this one, You've got someone doing the high jump, someone doing a long jump, someone jumping for joy, and someone doing a parachute jump. What word do you think links those four pictures? Uh, this jump, okay? Easy, okay? What about this one? You have a pair of burgers, you've got a pair of boots, a pair of socks, a pair of ladybirds. What one word links those four pictures? It's the word pair, okay? Easy, right? Here's one more. One more example. You've got a football, a basketball, a golf ball, and people dancing? Add a ball. Okay? So the word is ball. Yeah, got it. Now, this evening, I've got four pictures that link, hmm, well, it's a Christian word, but it's not a word you're going to find in the Bible. It's got six letters, and here are your four pictures. See if you can work out what is the one word that links these four pictures together? The first picture is this. It's a, it's a toolkit. Okay. The second picture is a party invitation. Who likes getting party invitations? I do. And the third picture is now toiletries, which for the boys here, that's washing stuff. Now, um, ladies have a big bucket full of stuff on the corner of the bath. Most boys just have one shower gel or even just nothing. But uh, toiletries, stuff that makes you clean. And the last picture is this. Who would like a car like this? Who can afford a car like this? Mm, no, nor me. Here we have a car. But a car that's been wrapped up like a, like a present. Okay. Hmm. So four pictures linked together by one word. One word is six letters. One word that's a Christian word, but it's not a word you find in the Bible. What is that word? Well, maybe someone to put down a timer right now. I'm not sure. Have to find out when we watch the final edit. But here comes the answer. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Easter. Easter is the word. But how on earth does a toolkit and a party invitation, and washing stuff, and the gift of a car that you can't afford. What's all that got to do with Easter? Hmm. Well, I've got four Bible verses that help us to understand what all these pictures have got to do with Easter. And the first picture we're going to look at is this. It's the toolkit. Now, who can tell me what do you use a toolkit for? Well, maybe building things, but often you use a toolkit for fixing things. And that's what we have here. There's a Bible verse that starts at like this. For if when we were God's enemies, 
we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, our friendship, which was broken, can then be fixed. And uh, I'm going to be in trouble because I've just noticed I've got grease down my hands from when I've been fixing my bike. So uh, don't tell Beck, otherwise I'll be in big trouble. But look, when Jesus died on the cross, he died to fix something, to fix our friendship. Because we were like this with God, but now, through Jesus on the cross, our friendship with God can be fixed. So that's the first picture, and that's what we celebrate at Easter time. The second picture is this, it's, it's the wash kit. All right. Now, what do we use a wash kit for? To be made clean, of course. And, well, we need to be made clean as well. You see, David, as in King David, as in David and Goliath David, he wrote a psalm and he said this, Have mercy on me, God. Hmm. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Transgressions are the things that we do wrong. And this is where the cleaning bit comes in. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that we could be made clean from all the wrong things that we do. That's our second link to Easter. Here's the next one. It's the, the party invitation. Now, I know we like being invited to parties, right? And Jesus often described heaven like a great party. He said this, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, he went in the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. The kingdom of heaven is like a royal party, a royal wedding. It's going to be like a, a party at the palace with the prince. It'll be great. And when Jesus died on the cross, it was it's a bit like an invitation for a party. Because it's through Jesus dying on the cross, we can be invited to heaven. If we've been made washed clean from our sin, and if our friendship with God has been fixed if we've been reconciled, like the toolkit and the wash kit. So we've got the toolkit, the wash kit, and the party invitation. What was the last thing? What was the last picture? Can you remember? It was the car wrapped up like a present. The car that we can't afford, but is wrapped up as a gift for somebody. And that's what we have at the cross. You see, at the cross, we're being given something we can't afford, and it's this. The Bible says it's by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves, but it is a gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. You see, boys and girls, we can't work ourselves into being forgiven. Actually, it's a gift, a gift from God. And it's a gift that is given to us when Jesus died on the cross because it's there if we put our faith in his death that we can be our friendship with God can be fixed like the toolkit. We can be washed clean from our sin and we can accept that invitation to heaven. Fantastic. And it's a gift. We can't afford it. But it's a gift from God for us. So boys and girls, four pictures, one word. And these four pictures remind us that well, at the cross at Easter time, which is our word, our relationship with God can be fixed. Our sins can be washed away. We get an invitation to heaven. And it's a gift. We cannot earn it, but it's a gift from God. Boys and girls, I hope you like that. But more than that, I hope that this, in that, hope that this Easter time, you put your trust and your faith in Jesus and you accept that invitation and that gift we can't afford and your friendship with God is fixed and you're washed clean from your sin. Well, until next time, goodbye for me and maybe next time I'll get the grease washed off my hands. Thank you, Steve, for that. Um, it's really great you've been able to um, get that sent over to me and uh, so the boys and girls uh, can see that. And we're going to look forward uh, to more uh, from Steve uh, next week, hopefully. And because uh, we're coming up to a very special time, aren't we? Um, within the, the next week. And uh, I might be some clues a little bit later about the video I'm going to show. Um, but uh, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you next week uh, as well. So, the challenge, here we go, Kezia and Sarah. Um, Sarah, well, big loss for her last week. Um, let's see if we, she can uh, redeem herself this week 
uh, with this challenge. Kezia is going to explain uh, what the challenge is for us. So Kezia, what have you got to do? Hey boys and girls, I hope you're all doing well again. I hope you've all had a good week. So this week our challenge is the straight arm challenge. Um, you may not have heard of it, you're about to see it. I think I'm gonna get really, really wet, but basically what me and Sarah are gonna do is we're gonna hold our arm out and we're gonna try and drink as much of this water as possible and the person who is the least wet at the end wins. So you've gotta judge that, okay? You've gotta see if I do it better or if Sarah does it better. Thank you, Kezia. So you know the challenge, boys and girls. Whoever is the driest at the end of this challenge wins. Uh, okay, so whoever is the driest wins. So uh, you can vote at home and uh, work out, uh, try and vote and think who you might think um, is going to be the driest um, at the end of this. So I'll just give you a moment uh, to do that and uh, then we'll see. Uh, we'll watch them both in action and uh, try and work out the winner. I'm gonna get so wet, it's so cold. Okay, are you ready? I think it's best to do it out of this bit. <laughs> okay, go. challenge is, as Kez has explained, to drink water with my arms straight. Are we ready? Okay, here we go. I think I would. Okay, I think we know who won that, but let's just have a couple of uh, screenshots um, of both of them just to see just to clarify uh, who we think uh, the winner is. Uh, so uh, looking at them, I yeah, I definitely think um, yeah, Kezia, Kezia is the winner uh, again. Uh, come on, Sarah, um, you gotta you gotta get with it. You gotta you gotta try and catch Kezia up now um, for next time. Uh, but let's just sing a song uh, before we have a look at our next prayer. Uh, the uh, Lord's Prayer, the next line uh, in that. Uh, let's sing a song uh, again together uh, and then we'll have a look at this prayer. Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised from the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus. Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the fishermen, Hey, come follow me. And they did, and they did, and they did. Because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one. The Son of God, Jesus is the Lord He's the one you can't ignore Jesus, Jesus, He is the King He is the King He commanded the evil ones Hey, come out of Him And they did Three days. 
Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the Jesus, is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. Okay, boys and girls, here we are. Uh, we're coming back to our prayer uh, again now. This prayer that deep Jesus uh, taught his disciples how to pray. Now we can read it as well, can't we? And it can help us to pray uh, as well. So let's read it again together, shall we? And uh, we can look at it and remind ourselves of it. It says, this is Jesus talking. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now we looked last week, didn't we, at that first line uh, where it talks about our Father in heaven. Uh, an amazing thing to have a Father who's in heaven, uh, an Almighty God who's there, uh, listening, as I said earlier, and uh, hearing our prayers. So what's the next line that says this, isn't it? Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Prayer isn't something we just know how to do, is it? And that's why we've got this Lord's Prayer to teach us. We need to be taught how to pray. And so we have this prayer here, don't we? And this line here, doesn't it? It says, may your name be kept holy. So instead of beginning our prayers by telling God what we want, what's Jesus teaching us here? Jesus is teaching us to begin our prayers by telling God how great he is. Not by asking stuff for us, but first of all, uh, talking to God our Father and telling him how great he is. He is, may your name be kept holy. God is holy, which means that he is not ordinary. He is greater than anything or anyone. He always does what's right. Now, I know that I can't say that, and I'm sure you boys and girls can't say that as well, but sometimes there is things that we do that aren't right. But what is it? He is always Right, he always does what is right, holy. When we pray that his name will be kept holy, we're asking God to reveal himself exactly as he is, so that we'll be, he'll be honoured by all people everywhere. Holy, without any sin, not able to do anything wrong, because he is holy. And we want his name to be kept holy, uh, as well and that can be done in many ways by telling him how great he is by not using his name as a swear word um, like some people do but we want his name to be honoured and we want people to know his name uh, don't we look what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 all honour and glory to God forever and ever he is the eternal king the unseen one who never dies he alone is God. Amen. So what, we can, what can we pray uh, then, maybe this evening, just before uh, you go to sleep? We can pray like this. Father, I want everything I do to bring glory to you. I want everything that I do to bring glory to you. And we can do that, can't we, by keeping his name holy, uh, by honouring him and knowing that he cannot do anything wrong and telling others all about him and so they too can know uh, that he is a great eternal uh, king so there we go excellent we're going to go into our video now and i said there's a special time uh, coming up over the next week or so and so this video is a little reminder um, of that 
um, that time in Jesus' life uh, that we're going to be looking at uh, over this next and celebrating over this next uh, week or so. God's wonderful surprise. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer, the king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but who ever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise, on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else. A shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, What are you doing here? This is a tomb, and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead any more, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt, and then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary. Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing Jesus. Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes, and great sobs shook her whole body, and all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now go and tell the others that I'm alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clear, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy. The trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' his friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course. 
So there we go then, God's big surprise. And uh, we're coming up to that Easter time, aren't we? Uh, next week, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, where we celebrate uh, Jesus coming back to life uh, again after being crucified on that cross. Um, why was he crucified? Well, it was to forgive us our sins, wasn't it? Uh, to die in our place so that we can be uh, forgiven. And death couldn't hold him, could it? Um, Jesus rose again those three days later, didn't he? And uh, we might see some more of that uh, next week um, as we uh, come up to that special uh, time. Well, I've got one last song for you uh, before uh, we finish uh, for this evening. Well, just a reminder, uh, favourite Bible character, draw a picture of them um, or get dressed up as that person. Uh, maybe with some props, something like that. Send a photo over and uh, we'll get those up on the uh, screen um, next week. And uh, don't forget, there might be some bonus material. Uh, so don't switch off too early uh, when the credits come up at the end of this song. Um, but uh, have a look and stick around and uh, uh, there's going to be some bonus material uh, after that. Uh, let's sing this song uh, together. And uh, I'm going to say tally hose and tuggle pips for now. Uh, until next week, uh, let's sing together. <laughs>
uh, at Glencroft and some of the adults uh, reading through a book at the moment. And uh, while all separated, we were able to read books and we have plenty of time and things to do that. And uh, we're reading a book at the moment and uh, we can share about it and talk to each other about it, and uh, which is going to be really, uh, really good. And uh, the book is called The Hiding Place and it's about a lady called Corrie Ten Boom. So I thought um, it'd be really good if the boys and girls can somehow get involved in that as well. And uh, I've managed to get a video and uh, it's the Corrie Ten Boom story. And so over the uh, next couple of weeks, um, I'm going to split it down uh, into sort of four or five minute um, parts uh, and upload them so you can have a, a look at them and uh, watch them and uh, you can know what the adults have been reading about uh, as well. So who is Koi Ten Boom? Well let me tell you what it tells, tells us about the video. Koi Ten Boom and her family are masters of their craft. They repair, repair broken watches and return them safely to their owners. But as the evil of World War II sweeps through their city, a new kind of watch comes to their care. An innocent Jewish boy desperately needs protection from the cruelty of the new Nazi regime. How will the Ten Booms keep this baby and many others out of harm's way? And what will be the cost of serving God? amidst unthinkable evils. When faith is tested, hope is tried, and love is strained, will Corrie's God prevail? And we're going to watch her amazing story um, over these next few episodes. So episode one, um, we're going to put that on uh, for you. And uh, I say over the next week or so, um, I'll upload the next part uh, so you can watch it. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, it's really great to know how God worked uh, and still works in people's lives and how he protects and loves um, his people. Uh, so let's watch this together, shall we? Some people say that time heals all wounds, but there are some wounds too deep for time alone to heal. They require a different sort of remedy. Believe me, I know. My story begins at a time when Hitler's Nazi army invaded our country, when my life changed forever. so gloomy, old man. It's difficult not to when our country has been taken over. Our Führer, Adolf Hitler's slogan is Join us and make a better world. We are here to make things better. You'll see. Now, about my watch. I'll need this is terrible, parts. Corey. I never thought it would come to this. Father looks so worried. Oh, Bitsy. How I wish there was something we could do. You have fine watches here, old man. Perhaps you should be just as selective with your, uh, customers. Never you mind him, Mr. De Vries. How may I help you? I... I have a watch that needs fixing. Well, let's have a look. It's a rather delicate watch, Miss Tenbo. Might I show it to you in the workshop? If you think it's best... Oh, it's absolutely adorable. What a beautiful... Baby? Yes, a Jewish baby. My nephew. 
If the Nazis find him, they will certainly take him. Take him? You've noticed they're forcing us Jews to wear an identifying star. Rumor has it that the next step is to round us up and get rid of us. The child's father was picked up by the Nazis. He's never been heard from since. We have no doubt that Hitler's regime is evil. But to harm a child? I cannot take any chances. I know you are godly people. Don't worry. My daughters and I would be honored to protect such a little one. Besides, look at that face. Who would possibly want to harm such a child? This is terrible! On your knees! Oh! Mr. Edelberg! They're taking everything I have! They say I cannot run my business anymore! But why? Why are they doing this? Because he's a Jew! This? This is how you intend to make a better world? You have to get rid of the bad in order to salvage the good. These Jews with their strange customs and religion have got to go! Round them up! All these Jews! What? Heil Hitler! Here, let me help you, Mr. Edelberg. We've got this one. No, stop. Leave him alone. Come with me. Father, where are you taking him? To safety, Aunt Cory. I'm taking him out of harm's way. Peter, is that you? The resistance? We have to fight back. This disguise was a good way to infiltrate and find out their plans. I can hide Mr. Eidelberg at our house on the outskirts of the city, just like we did the baby, until we can arrange to smuggle them out of the country. But the underground resistance? It's against the law. Against their law, Betsy, but certainly not God's. But Cory, surely... Let me give you a better understanding of the situation. Mr. Yakov, the baker around the corner. What about him? When was the last time you saw him? Right, you haven't. The Gestapo took him and his entire family two nights ago. The Beans, Seidens, Weismanns, all of them missing. Rumors are spreading that they are being rounded up and... What? Rounded up and? Exterminated. Killed? <gasps> the problem is, we are running out of places to hide them. Oh, Father in Heaven, what can we do? Thank <laughs> you.